You know, a question that I get a lot is, what do you do about people that bitch behind your back? And you've come to the right place, because I do my fair share of bitching, particularly behind people's backs. And, of course, obviously, as a public figure, what am I always reading? People that are bitching about me. Hate them so much. I wish I could get a screwdriver and just stab both their eyes out. La, la, la. But unfortunately, you go to prison for that kind of stuff these days. Which I talk about a society that has been run by soy boys for too long. But the other factor of that is, yeah, not obviously the highest, but the higher up you get in terms of people's notoriety of you the more you are going to get, regardless of how popular you are, you're going to have that adverse group of people that despise you and that are always going to be talking behind your back. The thing that I found particularly frustrating when I first started to gain notoriety, yeah, is people that I used to talk to, and they were fine, absolutely fine, parties, whatever, and they are always, you know, having a nice, friendly conversation with that, And then you hear, as soon as you get some semblance of fame, that all of a sudden they're bitching behind your back and he did this in high school, you know, I don't know, like he was mean to me. Like, the other thing as well is, at the very least, sometimes, yeah, okay, they had the right to bitch. But other times you're just like, you just invented that. That never happened. And yet they just talk about you behind your back. People that I've never met before, people always say, yeah, my friend knows you and they hate you and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like... I don't know that person. All of that stuff starts to happen. It used to drive me crazy. I imagine that it does with everybody when they first get into this realm. When you get into the public sphere, you first think, yes, I'm going to get permanent accolade and it's going to be like the magic school bus except for the wheels are going to be vaginas that I can have sex with all the time because that's what being famous is. You just get heaps of free pussy. Like you just think that. That's what's going to happen. But unfortunately, that isn't the case. Instead, what you get is two things. First off, the people that you always thought, "Mm, I'm going to show them, they don't care and they continue to hate you. And then people that did like you start to hate you. Now, what is going on there? Yes, I'm going to give you the most motherly advice ever. The oldest cliche there is, but it's a cliche for a reason. They're just jealous. Let's break it down. Everyone who is talking about you, the first reason that they are, first off, is, obviously, most of the time, except you very, very close people, no one cares about you, yeah? (laughs) So the only reason that they're ever speaking about you is for two things. One, you reinforce something, there's just their projected image of themselves, for whatever reason, it clicks with them, and so they are projecting onto you that, yeah, I like that trade in me, so therefore you're me, right? scary how narcissistic the world is, including yourself, including myself. It's just, it really does freak you out when you start thinking about how the brain's like, but how does this affect me? But uh, the other thing that they're obviously looking for is if there is a trait in them that they don't like about you, then they're just going to emphasize that. And so that actually obviously comes from jealousy because they, and either way, either way, even if it's a thing of, Yes, they're secretly jealous. Let's just go into the psychology of that. What is actually happening there when they're looking at you is that it is triggering in their mind something about, that's not fair, I think that I should have that position because I have or slash am better than that person for X, Y, and Z reason. So it is hitting an insecurity in them, which is why they are bitching about you. Otherwise... I believe me when I say this. I'm sure there's a counterexample. I haven't found it yet. Every time I've ever heard that somebody is bitching about me, what do they always do? They go to some press talking point. That's usually the first go-to because in all of those press talking points, what is the press doing when it comes to me? Jealousy. Jealousy that they cannot connect with an audience because they have no charisma, plus they're just culturally detestable, plus they're terrible people internally, so nobody likes them outside of this little group where they have just 
been festering in other filth. And so when somebody else comes along and starts reporting on politics and talking about politics that is somewhat closer to a normal human being, they can't relate to it. And so you get all of these things of them just trying to invent reasons to hate you. And no matter how many times you debunk those reasons, they will still come back with those same reasons. And the reason that they are doing that is because it is not evidence-based. It's scary how little our decisions, my decisions, everybody else's are evidence-based. It's mostly just based on justifying your existence. Justifying it, always, in your head. So, what's the easiest, most expedient way to justify you doing better than somebody else? It is to tear them down, usually behind their back, because this is the other thing that I found even more disheartening. When you go to these so-called parties, and this is why actually another reason that I don't go to them anymore because I just can't handle it, but the same people that you hear bitching about you behind your back all the time as soon as they see you, oh, hey, man, yeah, I'm a big fan, you know, that is the worst part. It would be, I really appreciate it so much more, obviously, like everybody does, right? When they come up to you and they're just like, fuck you and spit in your face, yeah? You just want to duke it out with them, but you respect it. When it comes to the other people that just do that, of the, mm, yeah, that's really great, it's scary. It's a bit off-putting. It's the same reason that, you know, when you're, like, tuning a chick, if you are hiding your intentions that you're tuning the chick, it's worse. It's much worse. Yeah? It's just, anytime anybody registers that someone is, like, hiding an intention, people back away. Having said that, when you go and reflect on these things when people bitch about you, yeah? Yeah? Sometimes the ones that really hurt, you think they're right about it. Yeah? Having said that, there are a lot of deficiencies that you can point out in everyone. But the fact that you got to where you are in your life was because in most instances, it's really easy to pick around the nepotism things. Yeah? And I do it all the time. And they do get plum positions in life. But a lot of people get to where they are because of the competence that they have in that area. And I see it all the time. This is a thing that I actually found that I, when I started thinking about it, I thought, yeah, no, actually that's really sad is that because I went to a performing arts school, a lot of the other kids that went to it didn't fulfill their dreams, didn't really try to go for their dreams. They went for the safe option, thinking in the back of their minds that, oh, one day I'm just going to quit this law job and then I'm just going to go in and start doing acting or whatever. And then they never did. And then they're 30 now and they've got a mortgage. So, Instead of that, the easiest way to do it is to just dismiss me, to just go like, oh, this press talking point, he's a racist, he's a sexist. The, the usual ideas that the aristocracy use to just dismiss people outright in this current context, that is always a code word, yeah? It's just sexist, racist, you've heard all of these points before, and this guy uses it, whatnot, but it's definitely true. Within the elite circles currently in our time, that is a way of, I can't think of a way to hate on this person, but we need a way to say that you are no longer within our bubble. And so they dismiss those people using one of these terms, and then that is the signal to everybody else to just cut them out. What I've realized with everybody that has ever bitched is, and this includes myself, I am definitely guilty of this, Obviously, a huge part of human evolution is that, and I think that this was the case that humans even evolved language in the first place, because they started looking at the language of gorillas. Most of the sign language that gorillas were coming up to talk between themselves wasn't to achieve a goal. It wasn't to, let's go get these termites. It was mostly just them being like, did you see Ugg's new comb over? <laughs> He's getting bald. That's what they were talking about. Isn't that phenomenal? And funnier because they're apes. But that is what human beings do, obviously. Because, spoiler alert, creationists. Ooh, getting pretty 2010 YouTube here. God doesn't eat dude. <laughs> no, I'm just being a smug dickhead for no reason. I don't know why I said that. I'm really sorry. And also, on top of that, I really wish that I believed in it like you did in the sincere way. So, good for you. Sorry, I'm going to stop being dismissive. Look, I, I do really respect people that are religious. Anyway, look. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that to Panda either. I just want to get that clear. Yes, when people are talking about you behind their backs, look at their lives. Look at their lives. Really pay attention because even if they are succeeding in one area, this is definitely the case when it comes to people from my school, for instance, because the people in my school, obviously, 
all of them had their little hoop dreams of becoming a creative and then they all died and they all settled for a life that they despise. And so the easiest way to dismiss it is to say, yeah, well, he's not that good anyway, and then take it out. I do this a lot. When I am frequently bitching about someone, I have recognized because of how much that I am talking about something, it is because there is a trait. There is a trait of theirs that they have that I want much easier to just dismiss and take them down. So, the conclusion being, if people are bitching about you, that means you're doing the right thing. It means that you are moving towards your goals and are accomplishing them. And instead of other people being too busy to think about that and focus on their own goals and move in that direction, instead, they are wasting their lives at parties in the consolation prize to succeeding, which is complaining. They are bitching about you because they do not have the competence and skills and they know it. So instead, they try, it is all a justification in their mind that I don't need to have the life that they have. Their life is crap anyway. That's what's happening. So, when you hear that people are bitching behind your back, it's not to say that you need to hang out with them and forgive them and all that kind of stuff. Just get to this one point. Take it as a compliment. All right. You liked that? Sign up to Jordan Shanks. Everybody that signs up to Jordan Shanks loves Jordan Shanks. They stay there forever because they know that the material that I provide to them is truly, by its definition, invaluable. This is the stuff that gets you ahead in life. This is the stuff that allows you to accomplish your dreams. And you will notice, this is the best part. This is the part that I'm most proud of it. I don't check it all the time, obviously, because I've got a million things to do. But when I do look in the comments, this is what I'm extremely excited about. You are surrounded by a bunch of people. This is an incredible community. I'm really, really proud of it. They... You guys, not me, you guys, I am proud of you because it is a bunch of people there that are studying self-help and they see it as this kind of like exclusive club thread, which is really cool what it turned into. And when other people are just saying, uh, you know, I've got some problems with whatever in life, you have a bunch of other supportive, extremely positive people because they understand the power of making sure that you have a positive mindset, an energetic mindset, a go-getter mindset. So you are surrounded by all these people that are more than willing to help out. That happened organically. So can I just say, everybody who is in the Jordan Shanks program, thank you so much for doing it. On the fact that you are encouraging yourselves and having that little community that is there, invaluable. Because the ones that exist online, a lot of those threads, I've got to say, critique, quite toxic. When I was a chap and I was looking at all of those self-help threads, a lot of the time, again, it was this thing of just trying to establish a hierarchy and bring other people down that were succeeding. It was a classic back and forth thing. Anyway, I have not seen that. I've just seen people that are helping everybody else out. So you just get this like immediate support line out of that anyway. It's great. Really seems like they're doing that. You can tell the people that are there are moving ahead in life and why not pool all of these resources together of all of these people, not just me. I'm not just the only one that are reading all of these self-help books. They're reading self-help books as well and reminding themselves, giving yourself that cohort because we're always saying, right, you lie with dogs, you get fleas. You are around people that are like-minded. You start to develop their mind. These are people that are into developing their mind. You want to be a part of that. That's invaluable in itself. It's such a low, low price anyway. Anyway, up to you. If you want to be a loser, that's fine.